I know a lot about Sonic lore, and because of that, the past year I was posting daily Sonic lore videos over on TikTok, and then, well... <laughs> So I've been remaking some of my older content before I just start re-uploading older stuff. And I've decided to do these remakes in segments so I can post them here as compilations that act as a single visual encyclopedia for a given topic. Also, these videos will be accompanied with newly recorded wraparound segments with corrections and additional information. Timestamps to different segments in the pinned comment below. The basic concept of Moebius, aka Anti-Mobius, is a very well-worn science fiction trope. The mirror universe filled with eye patches and goatees. Not exactly surprising, being that Ken Penders had a background in Star Trek comics. I'm opening with a larger correction up front. I mention Alicia, Patch, Boomer, and Miles first appeared in issue 24, and while that's the first time they actually served a narrative purpose, they actually have a one-panel cameo in issue 11, basically being used to explain the overall concept of the universe. With that out of the way, on to the TikToks. Moebius, or Anti-Mobius, is the Mirror Universe counterpart of Sonic's world, Mobius. Brief history of this world, while the main Sonic world was undergoing an event known as the Great War, this world was experiencing an event known as the Great Peace, wherein world peace was essentially achieved thanks to several key figures, including Scourge the Hedgehog's father, which in turn seemingly led to Scourge being neglected as a child. At some point, the Great Peace began to break down, at which point Scourge and his suppression squad, first known as the Anti-Freedom Fighter, took over the world, taking the life of Scourge's father and deposing this universe's version of King Max, banishing him to the void, leaving only kindly scientist slash veterinarian Dr. Kintobor to stand in the group's way. The main universe Sonic would first make contact with this world in issue 11 of the Archie comics, and this essentially served as the inciting action for several interdimensional conflicts which would follow. From issues 189 to 196, there was a story arc in which the Suppression Squad attempted to mount an invasion on the main universe, and unfortunately that would really be the last we'd see of this world. As while later issues clearly would serve as setup for more story involving Moebius, the continuity would be reset not too long after this and this world would not be revisited. Now, with Sonic Prime being focused on the multiverse, it would be forgivable for one to expect that this world would be revisited in some form. Unfortunately, the rights to Anti-Mobius and the majority of the characters who populate it were retained by writer Ken Penders. And at this time, it's incredibly unlikely that he, Sega, or even any Sega licensee would want to do business with one another. Scourge the Hedgehog, also known as Anti-Sonic or Evil Sonic, is the Mirror Universe counterpart to Sonic and is probably Ken Pender's most notable creation for the series. Funnily enough, despite the fact that the initial idea for Scourge of Sonic but the villain is kinda basic and par for the course for not even just this franchise but both the mediums of comics and games, that wasn't what he was initially pitched as. Pender shared a piece of correspondence he and co-writer Mike Kantarovic received from Sega licensor Bob Harris, and it's shows their original pitch for a story titled Dr. Sonic, in which Scourge would have taken on exactly Robotnik's role, to which Harris expressed confusion, stating that Sonic wouldn't be a scientist if he was evil, he'd just be evil. Despite Scourge's popularity now, his initial appearances saw him as very much a D-lister villain, either having him be betrayed by the real villain, fail his task altogether, or even be knocked unconscious by Antoine before Antoine became cool. The anti-freedom fighters don't even especially like him, as they abandon him in Sonic Super Special No. 10, and even later, they attack him on sight. In former Archie writer Carl Bowler's outline for his scrapped plans for the book, he lists Evil Sonic and the Anti-Freedom Fighters as third-tier villains, with less perceived importance than a character like Coconuts. Bowler's did have some pretty interesting plans for him, and while Penders did adapt a version of these plans, the results are questionable. Scourge really gained his popularity when Ian Flynn took over writing for the series, giving him much of what would become iconic about him, including his name and bright green color. Scourge would gain his green hue after becoming empowered by the Master Emerald. Flynn also expanded on Scourge's backstory, making it very clear that he's not just evil because he's from the Mirror Universe, but that he's a product of his environment, and that Sonic is just as susceptible to becoming just like Scourge, should his life fall apart, something that does weigh on Sonic's mind. Scourge 
Scourge would eventually return to Moebius, taking it over once again and regaining control of his suppression squad, and afterwards dubs himself King Scourge. He then begins an attempt to take over Mobius as well, but is eventually thwarted by Sonic and thrown in a multiverse prison. He does eventually escape, proclaiming he has a new plan, but the continuity was unfortunately rebooted shortly after this. Last year, it looked like we could have possibly gotten a resolution to this storyline, as Penders licensed out Scourge to some indie comic creators. But after some questionable things came out about some key members of the creative team, the project was cancelled. But you know, maybe some other indie comic label will decide to pick up the license. They probably won't, but, you know. Okay, some people wanted to know about what happened with the comic. I'm only comfortable covering this on the condition that no one harasses anyone. The drama is specific to two individuals on the team, three if you count Ken. I'm also not going to mention the names of anyone involved directly. They've pretty much all nuked their accounts from Orbit at this point. You don't need to seek these people out. Also, because of all the accounts either being inactive or gone, I'm reconstructing this both from memory and available sources. So context. Ken Penders announced that he would license out his characters for a $10,000 advance against royalties for a two-year period. There's a lot of legal minutia around it, an unrelated drama that's only tangentially related, but basically no one thought anyone would license it. Surprise, an indie comic group, Rush Comics, licensed Scourge. People clowned on it pretty immediately, probably didn't help that it was branded with officially endorsed by Ken Penders. But you know, I was willing to give it a chance because I generally like villain spinoffs, sometimes more than the main property. Then people started looking into the comic staff. Former Archie writer and current IDW writer Ian Flynn was apparently familiar with the lead writer, as he had paid Ian to critique his comic series Rush, and apparently had a negative reaction when Ian pointed out that the protagonist sexually assaults the villain. The writer has pretty thoroughly scrubbed Rush from the internet, and no one's taken screenshots of it. The script is still up though, and um, not great. The writer did express that they were ashamed of this creative decision, and the comic did come out like three years before this project, and someone can evolve a lot as a creator during that time. So I was unnerved, but I was willing to give the comic a look. Then the lead artist got outed as a bigot. And that was the end of that. The comic did try to save face with a press release, but the comic did get cancelled shortly after. For a frame of reference of how quickly this all happened, the comic was announced November 15th, and then cancelled November 19th. This period was less than a week, and the only thing to show for it is Penders comparing being a fan of Ian Flynn's writing to being a Yahtzee. Patch de Coulette, or Anti-Antoine, is the Moebius counterpart of Antoine. He first appears in issue 24 of the Archie comics, where he joins the rest of the anti-freedom fighters in attempting to ruin the reputations of their alternate universe counterparts. While Antoine can only fight himself to a stalemate, Sally is able to knock the anti-version unconscious. Later on, Patch attempted to banish Scourge from their world with a device known as the Zone Link Generator. However, Scourge managed to overpower him and instead sent Patch through the portal and also kidnapped the real Antoine while also swapping their outfits. This happened while Sonic was in space, so he wasn't around to notice the change. All anyone realizes is that Antoine now has a scar and a darker attitude, which also led to the relationship between him and Bunny being broken off. Patch, not one to waste a golden opportunity, uses Antoine's position in the Royal Guard to better his own position. He started poisoning Antoine's father, resulting in his untimely demise. He also began poisoning Sally's father, making him too weak to rule, forcing Sally to find someone to marry so that she may take over. As Sally and Sonic were broken up at the time, this led Sally's father to arrange a marriage between Sally and this imposter Antoine. However, when Sally's brother Elias showed up to assume the throne himself, seemingly foiling Patch's plans, Patch planned to poison Elias as well, but Sonic figured out what was happening, attacking Patch while also putting together that he wasn't the real Antoine. After Sonic defeated Patch, he returned him to Moebius and also rescued his universe's version of Antoine, allowing Antoine and Bunny to finally reunite. Patch would appear later during Scourge's attempt to take over Mobius. Though, like the rest of the Suppression Squad, Patch still didn't especially care for Scourge and made the arrangements to betray him at the first opportunity. Rosie the Rascal, or Anti-Amy, is the Moebius counterpart to Amy. She first appears in issue 193 of the Archie comics, making her one of the very last Moebius counterparts to be introduced to the comics. She also maintains Amy's original outfit. Instead of having a crush on Scourge, she wanted to destroy him. She used this universe's version of the Rings of Acorn to make herself older so that her attacks against Scourge would be more effective. Unfortunately, it appears as though the magic from the ring may have driven her crazy. When Sonic goes to get her help in battling Scourge, Rosie attacks him, noting that destroying a Sonic is close enough. 
She also attacks Amy, noting that breathing is close enough, too. Rosie's hammer appears to be stronger than Amy's as Rosie manages to break it. While she seems to just be violent towards everyone, when she finds Scourge, she becomes squarely focused on attacking him, and is even willing to work together with several other characters to do battle with him. While Rosie is shown to be incredibly strong, she proves no match for Scourge's super form, and he is able to knock her unconscious incredibly quickly. Issue 196 is her final appearance, though she does get an offhanded mention, in Sonic Universe 31. It's fair to assume she's one of the few Moebius counterparts not owned by Ken Penders, as she was first introduced to the comic by Ian Flynn. Princess Alicia Acorn, also known as Anti-Sally or Evil Sally, is the Moebius counterpart of Sally Acorn. She and Scourge took part in overthrowing Alicia's father, King Max, banishing him to the Void. Like many other Moebius characters, she debuted in issue 24 of the Archie comics, attempting to ruin the reputation of the main universe's Sally. She and Sally can only fight to a standstill, but Sonic quickly knocks her unconscious. Later, she breaks up with Scourge, citing his laziness as the main reason, and gets a new boyfriend, who we'll talk about later. She splits with her new beau as well and takes command of the suppression squad herself and led an assault on Sonic, who at the time they believed to be Scourge. But Sonic is able to survive their attack. Scourge later returns and takes control of the suppression squad once more. Alicia clearly still doesn't like Scourge and is one of the few who organized a mutiny against him. When Scourge is eventually defeated, Miles, the anti-version of Tails, stated that she could take the throne again, to which she replied that they both knew that Miles had the real power. Miles, also known as Anti-Tails, or Evil Tails, is the Moebius counterpart of Tails. He first appeared in issue 24 of the Archie comics, attempting to ruin the reputation of his Mobian counterpart, but is eventually defeated by Rotor. He, like other members of the Suppression Squad, would abandon Scourge in Sonic Super Special Number 10. Also, apparently, he was present for the brief multiverse event involving several different iterations of Tails. But personally, I don't think I can locate him in any crowd shots. This might be him, because it resembles his issue 24 appearance, but that would be a weird change being that we see him in a different outfit two issues later. Something he shows a great dislike of is the nickname Tails, as he does go by his proper name, Miles. While he does seem to value his scientific mind, he's shown more valuing a connection to the Chaos Force. Miles is the one who really begins planning the mutiny against Scourge, and he's confident in the plan until Scourge turns super, at which point he immediately becomes cowardly. At the end of the Moebius invasion arc, he's clearly beginning a plan for yet another invasion on the main universe, and shows great pleasure in the fact that Alicia acknowledges him as the real one in charge. Boomer Walrus, also known as Anti-Rotor or Evil Rotor, is the Moebius counterpart of Rotor Walrus. Funnily enough, his name is the original name for Rotor that was used in the Sat AM pitch document and early into the comic, and would later be established to be his childhood nickname. Like most of the anti-freedom fighters, his first proper appearance is in issue 24, attempting to ruin Rotor's reputation, but is defeated by Antoine. From here, he mainly makes cameos and small appearances, up until the Moebius arc, where he debuts a new look, having enhanced himself with cybernetics. He is also one of the main individuals responsible for, for programming the star posts to allow for multiversal travel. Like the rest of the suppression squad, he does not care for Scourge and would eventually betray him. Onux, or Anti-Knuckles, is the inexplicably Irish-accented Moebius counterpart of Knuckles. First appearing in issue 44, he is the defender of Demon Island, an island sunk beneath the waves, protected by an air bubble powered by the Anarchy Barrel. Also, in total opposite of Knuckles, he's a pacifist and deeply regrets whenever he must resort to violence. He is tricked by Scourge into helping with an attack on Mobius, as Onux had grown desperate as the island began losing oxygen. Onux eventually joins with the Freedom Fighters and discover that Scourge was working with the Robotnik of the main universe. They're able to eventually defeat him and save the island. Onux would next appear in issue 193 with the implication that Scourge may have taken his life, though it was confirmed in an unfortunately unarchived post on the Archie website that Scourge let him live. According to the Complete Sonic Comic Encyclopedia, Onux is actually the leader of a group known as the Orderix, the Moebius versions of the Chaotix. Unfortunately, the comic would be rebooted before they could appear. On an episode of the Bumblecast, Ian Flynn confirmed that about as far as he got with developing them was the name Orderix, and that they didn't particularly like Onux, much like the Supreme Suppression Squad dislikes Scourge, but no individual characterizations were developed. Dr. Ivo Kintobor, also known as Julian Kintobor and Anti-Robotnik, is the Moabian counterpart to Eggman. Initially introduced as a kindly veterinarian in issue 11 of the Archie comics, 
Dr. Kintobor constructed the Kintobor Tower to both act as a clinic to care for those assaulted by the Suppression Squad and also act as a base of operations to work against them. While he's never met his alternate universe doppelganger, he has assisted Sonic in foiling one of his schemes by providing him an invention to properly counter him. Just like Eggman, he's a genius in his own right, constructing a fleet of sweep bots to clean up after the Suppression Squad, and more impressively, constructing the Omega Care Unit to care for Bun's Rebo, while also keeping her potential fatal case of neuroimmunodeficiency syndrome from spreading throughout her body. Kintobor's number one priority is to provide comfort and care for all, even if he is occasionally a bit overbearing. This character is not to be confused with Dr. Avi Kintober, who appears in both Fleetway and the tie-in comic for the first Sonic game that was published directly by Sega, who is in fact Dr. Robotnik, aka Eggman, prior to becoming evil, but that's a story for another day. Bun's Rabo, also known as Anti-Bunny or Evil Bunny, is the Moebius counterpart of Bunny Rabot. As this universe's version of Robotnik is not evil, her first appearance depicts her as entirely organic, having never been roboticized. She's also a very late addition to the Anti-Freedom Fighters, not appearing until issue 151. It's quickly established that at some point she was dating Scourge, but Scourge cheated on her not only with Alicia, but also the Moebian counterpart to Penelope Platypus, who we never see. She returns to the comic in issue 193, establishing her to not only be the Moabian counterpart to Bunny, but also to Omega. After finding out that she had developed neuroimmunodeficiency syndrome, the same disease that afflicted Maria Robotnik, Scourge kicked her out of the suppression squad. Kintobor then took her in and built her the Omega Care Unit suit to keep her disease from ravaging her body. However, Kintobor still feels a great guilt over the fact that he cannot yet cure her condition. She undoubtedly shows fighting prowess both in and out of the Omega suit, and also shows incredible loyalty to Kintobor. Even when she is offered a place back on the Suppression Squad, she turns them down, though Miles seems doubtful that she'll be able to continue playing Hero. Metal Scourge is the mechanical duplicate of Scourge, funnily enough not built by Dr. Kintobor, but the Eggman of the main universe. When the combined, albeit incredibly dysfunctional, efforts of Scourge and Sonic prove to be too much for Metal Sonic to handle alone, Eggman quickly throws together Metal Scourge to even the offensive. Metal Sonic and Metal Scourge maintain an edge throughout the majority of the battle, as unlike their fleshy counterparts, they can actually work together and coordinate. The only reason Metal Sonic and Metal Scourge are defeated is because Sonic pressures Scourge to call in an assist from the Suppression Squad, who handle the conflict in the space of a single page. Leftover parts from Metal Scourge, in addition to plenty of other Metal Sonic bits are utilized by Sonic's Uncle Chuck to build the fan favorite character, Shard the Metal Sonic. But that's a story for another day. A very short-lived mech, but interesting all the same. Jeffrey St. Croix, or Croy if you like sparkling water, is the Moebius counterpart to Jeffrey St. John. He's first introduced in Sonic Super Special No. 10, where it's established that he became the leader of the anti-freedom fighters and, assumably, Alicia's new boyfriend. This wouldn't last, however, as he proves to be just as incompetent as Scourge, and the next time we see the Suppression Squad, they are being led by Alicia. Qua would then appear in the Sonic Universe arc Scourge Lockdown, having somehow gained the ire of the Zone Cops, landing him in prison. We see another feature of Qua that is opposite of John, as he is loyal to King Max, even if that loyalty is a bit shaky. Scourge and Qua's rivalry goes strong throughout this entire arc. During the jailbreak, he attempts to steal Scourge's belongings from prisoner processing so that he and King Max can use a warp ring to escape, but the Destructix ruin any chance of them making that escape. Smalls the Cat is the Moabian counterpart to Big the Cat. He debuts as Scourge's cellmate in the Sonic Universe arc Scourge Lockdown. It isn't initially stated what universe Smalls came from, but it was eventually confirmed on the Bumblecast that he is from Moabius. Within Scourge's first nights in prison, Smalls steals his mattress, forcing him to sleep on the bed springs, and Smalls makes a habit of bullying the temporarily depowered Scourge in prison, frequently assaulting him and just generally making his life miserable. However, once Scourge regains his power, Hours during the prison break, he slams Smalls into the ceiling, knocking him unconscious. You may wonder, why is Smalls in an interdimensional prison? Well, apparently, he was universe hopping in order to take the lives of all the froggies from different universes. Anti-King Max is the Moebius counterpart to Sally Acorn's father. Initially mentioned in passing as being exiled to the Void by Scourge and Alicia, he apparently did not simply wait there. He apparently recruited a, quote, nightmare army and began invading the multiverse, which is what landed him in multiverse prison. In the prison, he leads his own gang, exerting a great amount of control over the prison population. I think some members of his gang are meant to be Moebius versions, but I honestly couldn't hazard a guess for most of them, except for this one, 
one being Hamlin. He clearly has it out for both Scourge and the rest of the Destructix, though both he and St. Croix are beaten unconscious at the end of the story and assumedly are still in the multiverse prison. Fiona Fox is a character who appears in the Archie comics and was created by Mike Gallagher. Despite her close proximity to the Moebius storyline, she's actually from the main universe. As a child, she was captured by Robotnik. Sonic, Mighty, and Ray attempt to rescue her, but fail. Robotnik then built a robotic duplicate of her and used it to attempt to capture Tails by feigning a relationship with him. Fiona is left abandoned in Robotnik's prison and has to dig her way out. Despite falling in love with the robot, Tails did manage to destroy it, though not without being heartbroken. After escaping, Fiona would link up and become treasure hunting partners with Nick the Weasel, the sister of Fang slash Knack, and also the unintentional rival of Rouge the Bat. She also meets Mighty again, though she has very clear trust issues. She overcomes her trust issues temporarily and joins with the Freedom Fighters in issue 125 as an alien species known as the Zorda threatened to destroy all of Mobius, during which Tails saves her, which seemingly does rekindle his feelings for her. Her seeing Sonic sacrifice himself to save the planet also motivates her to stay with the Freedom Fighters. When Sonic does eventually return, him and Fiona do develop a relationship much to the frustration of Tails, as Sonic knew that Tails had a crush on Fiona that Fiona did not reciprocate. However, later on, Fiona betrays the Freedom Fighters, revealing to have been cheating on Sonic with Scourge. They later find themselves in the employ of Dr. Finitivus along with the Destructix, though Scourge and Fiona flee to Moebius together where they take over and Scourge makes Fiona his queen. After Scourge is defeated, she managed to escape the Zone Cops and once back on Mobius, she reforms the Destructix, becoming their new leader, and uses her new team to stage a prison break to rescue Scourge. Not really a correction, but something I want to talk about is Fiona's heel turn. If planned by Penders, it's actually pretty well foreshadowed. As the scene in issue 150 with Tails catching Scourge and Bunny together, Bunny thought Scourge was Sonic at the time, directly parallels issue 155 when Tails finds Sonic and Fiona together. However, I don't know if this was intentional on Pender's part. We know a fair bit of the plans that never came to fruition. Carl Bowler's plans do prominently feature Fiona, but nothing really directly hinting at betrayal. And Pender's scrapped plans don't mention Fiona at all. So it's entirely likely that Ian Flynn just noticed this parallel and added it in. Also, people claim a lot that Penders created Fiona. He did not. Like I said, Mike Gallagher created her for issue 28, and then Penders reintroduced her to the comic in issue 26 of Knuckles the Echidna and has never claimed ownership of her. Penders actually has posted a comprehensive list of all the characters he owns, and Fiona is not on it. The Destructix are a team of villains that appear in the Archie comics. Now, they've been around for a while and have had a revolving lineup. The complete Sonic comic encyclopedia states that they've had 12 official members, and some of these might be better to cover at another time, so I'm going to focus squarely on the team that Fiona and Scourge led. After Scourge was arrested, Fiona went to hire the Destructix, who she and Scourge previously worked with through Dr. Finitivus, only to find that their team was in shambles. Drago Wolf quit to join the Eggman Empire, Lightning Lynx returned home in an attempt to restore his honor, and even their leader, Sleuth Dog, full name Sleuth Doggy Dog, do you get it? Is quitting the mercenary business having saved up enough money to live comfortably for the rest of his life. Fiona is able to convince the remaining Destructix to follow her leadership on the condition they get Lightning Lynx back on the team. So Fiona uses Sonic to humiliate him in front of his ninja clan so that he is banished and essentially forced to join with the Destructix again. Next up, we're going to be talking about the individual members of this team. Sergeant Simon Simeon is a character who appears in the Archie comics and is a member of the Destructix. Simon grew up in a pacifist ape colony. After Robotnik first began to ravage Mobius, he was insistent that the colony needed to take a stand, but was ignored. Eventually, he was caught stockpiling weapons and was kicked out of the village. Simon then led a one-man assault on Eggman's base, but was eventually overwhelmed by SWAT bots. However, he was rescued by Mammoth Mogul, who took notice of his skills and wanted to hire him, to which Simon agreed to. Returning to the village, Simon finds that they have followed his advice, taking up arms and giving him the role of sergeant. And while he accepts the rank, he rejects those who gave it to him. From there, he is part of Mogul's fearsome foursome, along with three other future Destructix members, though they are defeated and end up in prison. From there, he works under the direction of quite a few different villains, like Snively, Dr. Finitivus, and even ended up roboticized at one point. In this time, he does show the capacity to be heroic, as under the direction of Finitivus, he rescues Knuckles' mother, stepfather, and brother, gaining the family's respect. That respect would unfortunately be lost once he and the Destructix kidnapped Knuckles at the direction of Finitivus. While he seems very aware that he's been used multiple times, he shows a great amount of reverence for his teammates. 
Predator Hawk is a character who appears in the Archie comics and is a member of the Destructix. He follows much the same path as Sergeant Simeon, so to avoid being repetitive, we're going to focus on his origin story. Predator Hawk was once a member of the Battlebird Armada and worked tirelessly to rise through the ranks. He grew frustrated, however, upon reaching the highest possible rank, as next in line as leader was the current Battle Lord's son, Speedy. He attacked Speedy in a bid to improve his own positioning, but was then imprisoned by the current Battle Lord for his insubordination. He would then be rescued by the Babylon Rogues, and even briefly became a member, though grew frustrated again as he generally disliked treasure hunting and thought Jet was not a worthy leader. While attempting to sell some treasure, Mammoth Mogul used the opportunity to recruit Predator. More than anything, Predator wants to be challenged, to have to continue improving for his own personal growth. Lightning the Lynx is a character from the Archie comics and a member of the Destructix. Once again, very similar story path to that of the other Destructix, but I'll cover his origin and deviations in his story. Lightning was once member of a ninja clan known as the Raiju clan. He had fallen in love with the clan's leader, conquering Storm, and challenged her to a duel to both prove his strength and his feelings. However, he was handily defeated by her and was exiled by the clan. Mammoth Mogul recruited him, but when the Iron Dominion took over and the Iron Queen took over all the ninja clans, Lightning was welcomed back into the clan and then would also recruit Espio, who was a member of the Shinobi clan. Espio and Lightning's combined fighting ability even proved to be too much for Sonic and Monkey Khan. Lightning's return to the clan unfortunately Unfortunately, didn't last long as Sonic humiliated Lightning in front of Conquering Storm, resulting in him being exiled once more and having to rejoin the Destructix. Flying Frog is a character from the Archie comics and a member of the Destructix. He is easily the most unhinged member of the team, often failing to put together even comprehensible sentences. We don't even know his backstory for sure. The story that he tells Scourge is that he was once a jester in the Kingdom of Mercia and was clearly very violent. They had attempted to lock him up, but he had escaped and continued to play a game he referred to as Chase, Deface, Erase. So we can probably assume that Flying Frog has quite the body count. Notably, he's the only member of the Destructix that scares Scourge. I feel like this is my only opportunity to talk about this character, so I'm taking it. Abby is a character from the Archie comics and is Fiona's cellmate in prison. She's apparently been in the prison for 30 years and so has a high place on the prison hierarchy. It's unclear if she's a Moebius version, but she is a version of a character we had seen before. Abby had previously appeared as the maid to Knuckles' family in the Moebius 25 years later storyline. Her design earned her the fandom nickname Photorealistic Koala Maid, both due to the fact that that pretty accurately describes her design and the huge difference between her and the other koala character, Barbie, who had been introduced before her. This nickname was then referenced in the comic as her prison jumpsuit has the identifier PRKM. Funnily enough, though, when koalas were added to the games in Sonic Rush Adventure, design-wise, they have much more in common with Abby than they do Barbie. The Anarchy Barrel is the Moebius counterpart to the Chaos Emeralds. Much like the Chaos Emeralds, they can be used to turn super, which Scourge uses them to do. Sonic theorizes that he would be able to do the same thing, but is not afforded the opportunity. Onux is guardian to at least five of them, from what we can see, that act as the power source for the air bubble for Demon Island, but it's continually implied there's more. The drawback to the Anarchy Barrel is that after a super transformation runs out, the individual is entirely drained of power. Sonic uses this to his advantage, forcing Scourge to run out his super form so that he can be quickly dispatched. It seems at some point in Mobius' future, the Anarchy Barrel may be taken from Moebius, as one of the weapons hidden in the catacombs of the dungeon was the Anarchy Barrel Bomb. The Anarchy Barrel also gets a passing mention in the Sonic Forces prequel comic when Cubot is attempting to name the Phantom Ruby, but Orbot shoots it down as being too derivative. So after all that, some of you may want to specifically read these characters' stories. Well, I've gone through the effort of organizing a reading list. I'm a big fan of the omnibus format, so consider this our Moebius omnibus. Moomnibus. Mo Moemnibus. I primarily focused it around Scourge and Fiona for simplicity's sake. I've posted the reading list on my Tumblr and I have its link in the description. Thank you for watching. I'm continuing to post videos daily on TikTok, and if you want to support me, you can do that through my Patreon. I want to give a shout out to my current patrons, Ned Rex, Tentacle Teapot, and AJ Wigglesworth. See y'all in the next video.